Hey guys, Lachlan here, and today we're going to be examining the Monte Carlo method for definite integration. So for those of you who don't have any background knowledge about the Monte Carlo method, it operates off the principle that if we place, say, a thousand or two thousand uh, randomly generated points in a shape of known area, a set amount will lay above or below the curve. So for example, if we were to take this rectangle here and uh, come up with a function that generated thousands of points within this area here, a set amount of those points would lay below the line and a set amount of those points would lay above the line. And if we generated a percentage of the points below the line, we could then use that um, number to multiply by the known area to give us an approximation of the area under the curve or the integral. And so hopefully what, uh, what I hope for you guys to achieve by the end of this tutorial is to have a plot that looks something like this. Um, and to have a set of functions that lets you determine the amount above and below and then sub subsequently work out the estimate. Uh, so right here I've just, I've just got my plot. Um, it's, I'm just using a simple cosine function just for the purposes of this tutorial um, but you guys can really use it with any function you'd like. It's just important that the function's x values remain in the c column and the function's y values remain in the d column throughout this spreadsheet or, and I'll talk more about that later. So once you've got your um, x and y values uh, you're going to want to make a random x and a random y column. And so Excel has got a beautiful function called rand uh, which you use just like that and it'll give you a random uh, number between 0 and 1 as you can see here. But so that leads a, leaves a problem if we're looking to integrate uh, between x values of say 0 and 28. And so to overcome that uh, we just add the times 28 there and you'll see that now the string between 0 and 28. So but say for example we wanted to integrate between 10 and 20 that would come up with another problem. So what we'd have to do is do 10, which is the lowest number. We don't want any numbers below 10, plus um, a randomly generated number times the difference between the two values. So say we want between 10 and 20, uh, we'd multiply this by 10. And again, you'd see that that string between 10 and 20, not above, not below, and that's very important. But if we just go back to the usual, leave us like that and we're just going to repeat the same for the y so rand by 2.5 which is our maximum y value of the plot and uh, the y value of the rectangle so really these random points uh, dictate the rectangle that we're using once we've done that So we'll just do 20 points for a demonstration. So now that's great. Uh, we've got these ran random generated points, um, but now we need to come up with a function or a way to determine whether they lay above or below the curve at that particular x value. And to do that, what you just what you want to do is copy across this um, the function that you're using, but instead of using the function's x value we want to use the randomly generated x value. So, if I move this to A2, which is the randomly generated x value, and press enter, it will tell me uh, the model's uh, value at that particular x point. So then we can compare between this, the randomly generated point, and the uh, model point at that particular x value, and create an if function to determine whether it lays above or below. So now that we've done that, um, we'll get on to the if value. So the if value is a bloody handy tool in Excel, a handy function, and so the, the logical test in this case is if um, the model's y value at that particular x point is greater than the random y value, then that means that the random y point is under y. So value if true is yes, value if false 
answer is no. And then you can see as I drag this down, there'll be yes and no's as we go along. And now that's good, but because we've only got 19 points, it's not going to be very accurate. But the beauty of Excel is that we can simply drag this down. And what we can drag this down, say, 132 points. It doesn't matter, you don't have to necessarily look at how many points you've gone down. But yeah, we're just going to stretch all of these down. And then I will show you the other functions that we use to determine the different uh, variables. But if we were to graph this now, you'd see, my mistake, you'd see that it looks like the one from before. So perfect, we've done that. So to determine the number of points under the curve um, and the total number of generated points, we're going to again use two more functions. Sorry. So for this one, uh, we're going to use an equals count if function. So the range in this case is the F and the criteria is yes. And so there you can see it gives us the 900 value, which is the number of points that are underneath the curve. To generate the number of total generated points, we're going to use another count function. And that just counts the, um, the amount of columns in, in, say, the A column. The amount of entries in the A column. That gives us 1131. So then using these values, we can come up with a fraction, which is that divided by that. And so we can say 78.2493% of the randomly generated points lay below the curve. And so we know that the area of the rectangle is between 2.5 and 28. So 2.5 times 28. And so that means the area is 70. And to generate the approximation, we do the 70 times uh, the percentage and that gives us an approximate of 56.57 square units and I've done the, int the uh, algebraic integral before and it's actually 56 units and so from that we can see that we've actually got a percentage error not a percentage error sorry but a well, in this case, we've got a percentage error of just 1.6799%. And the beauty about the RAND functions is that with every refresh of the spreadsheet, it actually regenerates these. So if I was to go like this, you'd see that the points keep on regenerating and the percentage error changes too. So look, in that one, we've got a 6.4 uh, percentage error, uh, 0.64, sorry. In this one, we've got a 2.3. And obviously the more points that you generate, the more random points that you generate, and the more random points that you plot, the more accurate it's going to be. So theoretically, we could expand this down for 10,000 rows uh, to, get a more, to get a more accurate answer. So that's the Monte Carlo method. I've hoped, I hope you've learnt a fair bit. See ya.